Good day, everyone. Welcome to the Rapids Parish Library webinar on DNA and genealogy. My name is Shara Broussard LaPointe, and I'm happy to be here today to share with you some of my DNA journey and experiences that I've had using DNA to further my genealogical pursuits. And I hope that I can share some interesting information with you that can help you do the same. Uh, DNA is an amazing thing. Um, it has totally changed my life. In 2015, I did a DNA test, and uh, I can honestly say that is the best $99 I think I have ever spent in my life. Um, it changed my passion. Um, I now help adoptees, people with uh, unknown fathers, find their biological family, um, and also work with law enforcement to help identify the unidentified and to solve major crimes such as murder and rape. And um, if I can do encourage anyone today to DNA test, I feel like I would have accomplished my goals. So today we're going to talk about um, DNA testing again uh, and how you can use it for genealogy. DNA and the use of DNA in genealogy is called genetic genealogy. And again, uh, that is using DNA in combination with genealogical um, information such as census records, uh, birth records, uh, any kind of documentation that you can um, find information on your ancestors and you combine it with your DNA results to prove your lines. So um, it's really a fascinating thing, but you cannot use it alone. You have to use it in conjunction with the documents to um, verify your information. So there are basic principles about DNA and genealogy. And um, again, um, this is actually the definition of genetic genealogy. It is the use of DNA testing in combination with traditional genealogical and historical records. Genetic genealogy involves the use of genealogical DNA testing together with documentary evidence to infer relationships between individuals. And that's what we use to figure out who your biological family is. There are basic principles when it comes to genetic genealogy. Again, DNA is basically a genealogical record, just like a census record. It's used in comp in combination with these documentary records, and it relies on database matching. That means that no matter what company you DNA test with, they have a database of other people that have DNA tested. And that is how they come up with your ethnicity and your DNA matches. Your DNA is compared to everyone in their system. Again, as I said, DNA is an amazing thing. Um, it's proven a lot of things for me, and it's also been able to disprove things that people um, thought on paper or on record were correct, and once DNA tests were done, that information was found not to be correct. So um, one of the most amazing things I think that I found by doing a DNA test was uh, I actually gave a DNA test as a gift to my um, brother-in-law by marriage, and I found out not only is he my brother-in-law, he's also my first cousin once removed. So when you DNA test, you actually never know what surprises may come up, and you really need to be prepared for that information. So why do people DNA test? There's a number of reasons. So a lot of people you come in contact with will have tested for different purposes. Um, Oftentimes, people want to know why don't they respond to my messages. When you get a DNA match, you send them a message through the system and they don't respond. In my experience, the majority of people have DNA tested for ethnicity purposes only. I'm going to tell you that's why I DNA tested. I knew that my ancestors were mostly French, but I still wanted, I think, verification on paper to actually see that. Um, and that is 100% the reason I DNA tested. Once I got the results, a couple of things happened to me. Um, 
a first co a cousin of mine, my mother's first cousin, grew up thinking that his, uh, the man who was supposed to be his father wasn't his father. He was told that by his mother. Well, once I did a DNA test, he was one of my closest matches. And I realized that my great uncle had indeed fathered my friend. And it really floored me because my great uncle passed away not knowing that this child was actually his child. And that was very surprising and shocking to me. Another thing that happened is my oldest grandson's mother did not know who her biological father was. And um, through this system, she was able to find out who he was. And her father ends up being a good friend of mine. <laughs> so, so not only is he her father, we share a grandchild also. And I was fascinated with it, and I just needed to learn more. So um, you have to be prepared with the things that are out there. But for me, it's all been a blessing. There's not been anything negative about it. So you, what can you do with the DNA test when you get your results? You can verify your family lines. You know, um, I mean, on paper, and I knew who my father was a Broussard, but, you know, was I really a Broussard? I guess there was always a chance that I wasn't. But when you do a DNA test and you see your matches and they're the same family, you know, and, and you look at the numbers and you realize this is correct or it's not correct. Um, again, ethnicity purposes. And again, I want to stress that the ethnicity results are very much, um, should be taken with a grain of salt. They are not a scientific fact. And I'll explain later how this is based. But it's still very, it's fun to see and, um, you know, it leads you in the right direction. Also looking for biological family. When I started this, I honestly think I knew one adoptee. To this date, I've solved probably over 120 adoptee cases and it is the most rewarding work I've ever done in my life. Um, break down brick walls. You know, a lot of people don't know who Grandpa Smith was, can't find records of him, and through DNA you can actually trace those lines and find that information. Also, um, you can provide a geological research, uh, area for research. I have a, a friend who actually has become a very good friend of mine. Um, we met about three years ago. She was an adoptee. And I remember one of the first things she told me was, I don't have a French bone in my body. Well, lo and behold, she does have French in her body. She's a Benoit and a LeBlanc. And um, DNA also proved that we happen to be DNA matches. So again, you never know what you're going to find out when you take a DNA test. Exploring surnames, that can be done through the, the Y DNA. Um, I'm actually helping with a project now. I was a Broussard. Um, y DNA is the male line. I can't Y DNA test, but I had a brother who could. And I have a good friend of mine who was trying to prove his Broussard connection. And um, through Y DNA, we've be, been able to narrow down that information. So it's, it's really interesting to be able to do all of that. Again, ethnicity. Experts recommend that you take the results with a grain of salt. This is what happens. Um, a company like Ancestry will go to an area, say in the south of France, and they will pick X amount of people and DNA test them. And they look for people who have been there, their, their families have been there their whole lives. Then when I DNA test, my results are compared to those in that community, and you see how much percentage of DNA you share with those groups. Again, these companies have not tested everybody on Earth. Everybody on Earth has not DNA tested. So the databases are only as good as the information that's in there. As the information grows, as more people DNA test, as uh, these companies spread their wings, it becomes refined. Ancestry now has what they call community groups, OK? I'm actually grouped in communities in southwest Louisiana, OK? Southwest Louisiana Cajuns, um, South Louisiana Creoles. So there are um, hundreds of communities, depending on where you're from, that you can be grouped with. And while my ethnicity says I am European, it also shows where my DNA matches concentrate on in what area. So that's really good information, especially when I'm looking for somebody who doesn't know who their biological family is. You know, when I look at that and I see they're grouped in groups in southwest Louisiana, well, 
pretty much that's telling me their ancestors are going to come from that, that area. So again, DNA is a fascinating thing, and it's, it's very interesting to me. And um, what, what we're going to talk about is actually autosomal DNA. You have 23 pairs of chromosomes, one's a sex chromosome, and the DNA testing that's done in these direct-to-consumer autosomal tests are actually, uh, it, they check about 700 markers throughout your DNA. And it, just to give you a basis, CODIS is the combined DNA index system that is used by law enforcement. When your DNA goes into that system, they test 20 markers, simple 20 markers. And when they're looking for someone in that system, it has to be an exact match or what they call a familial match in some states where it's a parent or a sibling or a child. But this kind of DNA test is a much broader range and it gives you much more information on your heritage and your background and it digs deeper into your DNA. Again, what exactly is DNA? I remember in school being able to say D-O-Roxy. <laughs> Wait, I got it wrong. <laughs> oh, hold on, I need a breath, can I? Okay. Okay, so I remember in school being able to say D-O-Roxy. I can't say it. Hold on, I'm not, I'm gonna go away from that. I'm, I'm, I'm getting cold feet, hang on, I'm okay. <laughs> so, okay, so what exactly is DNA? Um, I'm not gonna get too, too scientific about this today, but the one thing that you really, really need to know about this is that Human DNA is actually 99.9% .9 the same. And when you do an autosomal DNA test, what they're looking for is that 0.1 difference. That sets you apart from everyone else. And that is what is used to find your matches and people that you are connected to. So that's really um, what's very fascinating to me about this whole DNA um, about all of this DNA stuff is that, you know, humans are basically very much alike other than that 1%. So this is where I think it gets a little bit interesting. Um, there are actually four types of DNA that you can test for for genealogical purposes. The first one is called mtDNA. It is mitochondrial DNA, and it is your direct mother's line, or it's called your umbilical line. In my case, um, my mother's line is Acadian, came from Nova Scotia by way of France, and to get that information, you track your mother's line, your mother's, 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 mother. Well, there is, in a cell, there are mitochondrial DNA cells, and that can be tested to prove that line. And my mtDNA MT line actually is uh, goes back to a Catherine Bougaret who came to Nova Scotia from France. And there's a project called the Mothers of Acadia that has helped to prove who all the women were who settled that area uh, back in the 16 and 1700s. And I was really fascinated with that information. mtDNA is done through um, either 23andMe will give you an mtDNA or um, a, um, family tree DNA has a deeper mtDNA test, and they have groups that you can join um, that you can share information, you know, and hope to, the purpose of mine was to hope to be able to further the line, but we have not been able to find out who Catherine Bougaret's mother was. But um, that is interesting information. xDNA, that determines the gender. Of course, women have two Xs, one from their mother and one from their father. Men have an X and a Y, okay? XDNA can play a very important role um, when you're looking for biological family, for one thing. Uh, I did learn that two sisters who share the same father will share a full XDNA. There's no break in that DNA. So if, um, 
if I have a DNA match and I don't know if these two women are aunt and niece or siblings, if you look at the X DNA chromosome line, if they are siblings, their line will not be broken at all. It will be a full X DNA. And that has definitely come in handy in a number of, of cases. Um, y DNA, again, only men pass down from father to son. So if my brother's a Broussard, my dad was a Broussard, his dad was a Broussard, you should be able to follow that line. And even though your Y DNA matches aren't close people that you even really know, it should all, it should all go back to the same what's called haplogroup. And it should, you know, if I don't know, I helped one gentleman who was an adoptee and um, we did Y DNA, he had 61 matches, they were all Polish names, and they were all different names. So, you know, not everyone names, uses the surname like, like we do here, and uh, it was totally confusing to me, and it gave me no information at all. We found his father. His father was a Smith. Don't know where the Polish came in, that Smith line, but, but it also can be very helpful. So AT or autosomal DNA, again, which is what we use when you spit in that tube or you swab that DNA test, um, there's a pair of chromosomes that's found in the nucleus. We have 23 total pairs, and one is the sex chrome. You inherit one copy from your mother and one copy from your father, okay? So um, remember that when we talk about inheritance in a minute. So DNA inheritance, this is a little chart, and um, this is very important. You know, I hear people say all the time, oh, well, I don't have to test because my sister tested, or I don't have to test because my brother tested. Well, I'm here to tell you that your sister or your brother will have different DNA matches than you do. Um, my sister matches my mother's maternal side much closer than I match them. I match our father's paternal side much closer than she matches them. So it's like a deck of cards. You have 52 cards, you have four children, you hand out the cards. Your deck is the same, but they each get a different hand. And that is exactly the way it is when it comes to DNA. So other than identical twins, they will share the same DNA. So it's pretty interesting to find out who, you know, you match closer, um, you can, I think it's very interesting, um, and I know now why my sister's hard-headed. 